Okay, here we go. Twig functions, the unit circle approach. This is all kinds of fun wrapped up in a circle. Yay. Okay. <laughs> now, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, and we had set up a few of the things to work with when it comes to unit circle. Now, again, the unit circle has a radius of 1. That's what we identify. But we don't identify it as anything real super specific. It's just one unit. So these are a few things that you should make sure that you add into that sheet that I gave you yesterday. Okay. So whenever we're looking at the coordinates, the coordinates are always going to be as follows. So let's do this here real quick. Here, go there. So when we were talking about x and y yesterday, and it says here the sine functions. So the sine identified by whatever. Now identifying this, we're looking at an angle measure on a radius, or some kind of measurement, a sine on the unit circle. So sine is going to be y, cosine is x. This is going to be rather handy for us later on. So we've got, keep this in mind that we have, sine, comma, cosine. Keep that in mind. So as we continue on here with this, these three functions are ones that come along with, come along for the ride. And the tangent function, obviously, you've ran across that before, sine over cosine. And cosecant in the secant function are identified there. Again, make sure that you have that information down. You can keep that on that sheet so that you know which ones are which. Because you'd like to think that after a while we start taking a look at which one is sine, which one is cosine. Yeah, you'd like to think things would go in a certain, certain way. So. And then, of course, cotangent, which is flipped around. So, we were going to take a look at finding the exact values of the six trig functions, okay? Now, there are specific things that we want to identify. So, let's take a look at this right now. And see, I'm going to make this a little smaller. So if I look at what I've got here, I've got a point over here that is going to be negative one half and square root three over two. I can go through and identify exact all six of these things based on that information because I've got X and I've got Y. I know exactly where these are going to be. So that's how we translate between them. Now, trigonometric functions of the angles. Okay. So we can take a look at this in terms of degrees. We can take a look at this in terms of radians. That's why yesterday when we were working on this, that we identified what are the degrees and what are the radian measures. So we know how far around that we end up having to go. So. Now again, these are kind of nice to have but we're just identifying these as sine theta. Okay? And we are identifying these as radians. So whenever we are going to be looking at this, we want the sine of theta, cosine of theta. And you'll also notice on your little calculator that there is a little on the variable button that you have theta on there. And there is one thing I want to kind of point out to you on this. When you're looking at this and working on the calculator, you're looking at this right here. You've got the x, you got the t, you got the theta, you got the n. There's a catch to all of this. 
the calculator normally thinks in radians, not degrees. I know we've talked about this a little bit before. But when you're working with this and you put in and you want the cosine of a specific value, make sure that you hit the mode and that you have it identified whether you are in radians or degrees. Because it will make a difference. Because if you think about it, there's 360 degrees in a circle and there's only two pi radians. So the values are going to turn out to be very, very different. just to make sure that I got that point. Now, we've talked about this yesterday where we went through and put numbers on the unit circle. This is why we do this, is so that we can find the exact values. So if I want to find the sine of zero, well, that's fairly easy to do. Sine is the x coordinate, correct? Zero degrees is over here, so that means the sine of zero degrees is what? One, just that quick and easy, okay? So, what full sec? Did I write that? I wrote those down wrong, didn't I? Sine is y, cosine is x. How did I mess that up? How did I mess that up? Why did I write that that way? Shame, shame, shame. Cosine, comma, sine. Thing is, I knew that. So it happens when you're thinking further ahead. So I want the sine of zero degrees. Sine of zero degrees is y. Y is equal to zero. Cosine is x. Cosine is one. Because those numbers I knew, and it's just like, well, it didn't make sense. So I can go through here and I can find all of these wonderful little things. Now, we're dealing with this just right now in terms of 90, 180, and 270. Now we notice that there was a whole bunch of other stuff that's there. Now, here's some things to think about. When we are looking at this stuff, we also have that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Correct? Is that how it goes? So, Katoa, remember that all that wonderful stuff? What happens when cosine is zero? So, what's the tangent of 90 degrees? Well, when we go back and take a look at this here, pi over 2, 90 degrees, it's not defined. So, there are going to be places on here where things just simply are not going to work. But you will also notice that there's a certain repetitive pattern to this, isn't there? So, now, finding the exact value of something like sine of 3 pi or negative 270, that's no big deal. 3 pi, you just go around 3 pi times. Goes around once, which is 2, and you come back over here, that's 3. It's just counting how many times you go around. Negative 270 degrees, well, negative that way. So, one of the things that might be helpful for you to add on to your unit circle here would be say a little notation that had like this. If it's plus, we go this way, which is also C, C, W, counterclockwise. If it's negative, we are going to go down this way. And this is CW clockwise. So rather than trying to keep things in your head, you want to have a nice quick guide to look at and say, oh, which way do I got to go? This way or that way? So actually, I just noticed something I should have done there at the end. I'll do that. I should have used. I haven't used green yet. Because green is go, that tells you which way to go, right? Got to keep things color coordinated. There. 
better. That's just for my own sake. So we've got that going here. Now, how in the world am I supposed to find this? Functions of pi over 4. Now, we had already identified on the unit circle where those things were at. So if I'm looking at pi over 4 here, it's at 45 degrees. But what value is that? What, what, what is that going to be? Well, one of the nice things about this is it's all based upon right triangles being applied to the circle. So if we have a radius of 1, that means the hypotenuse is 1. Okay? So that means that x squared plus y squared must be equal to 1. Good old Pythagorean theorem, right? So as I go through and I, I do this, well, it bisects it, right? 45 degree angle. If I think about this for a second, if it's 1 and it's bisecting it, cutting it in half, should that not indicate that it is going to be these two being the same? Because if we think about it, 45 degree angle, if it's 45 here, it's got to be 45 here and it's 90. A 45, 45, 90 means that the two base angles are the same. That means the sides have to be the same. Okay? That means we've got an isosceles triangle going on here. So and if it's an isosceles right triangle, the two sides are the same. That means the legs are the same. And when I do the math, I find out that x and y are equal to the same thing. So x is equal to square root 2 over 2, y is equal to square root 2 over 2. So when we get back to our unit circle and we are looking at this, we now know that this is going to be square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2. We have a set of coordinates now that we can have for that. Not only that, but because this is a unit circle, this also gives us the length of the sides. Very important thing to have available. Now, yesterday when we were doing this, we seen how things stayed the same. Think of this unit circle as being dropped onto a coordinate plane system where everything is one unit from center to the outside. Think of this as being the y-axis. Think of this as being the x-axis. So do I know exactly what the coordinate is going to be over here for 135 or 3 pi over 4? Reflect it across the y-axis. So this is going to be negative square root 2 over 2, comma, square root 2 over 2. Does that make sense? So likewise, we can go through now and fill this all in down here. This is going to be negative square root 2 over 2 and negative square root 2 over 2. Over here, square root 2 over 2, comma, negative square root 2 over 2. We've got that information. So we can go straight to that. We know where we're at. So that was easy enough. Fun, wasn't it? Yeah, but we still got some blanks here to fill out, don't we? All right. Now we still got some blanks to go. We got here at pi over 6 and pi over 3. Nice thing is we only really have to figure out one of them. Okay. So, keep on going down. Now, again, this is, like I said before, this is based on the idea of a right triangle. Okay. So, if I look at what we have here, for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If I were to have two of these, okay, flip it across here, 
I would end up getting an isosceles triangle. So this would be 60 degrees here. This would be 60 degrees here. This would be 60 degrees here. And because I know that my radius here is one unit, that's one, that's one, this is one. So I know exactly what this distance for A is. This distance for A happens to be half. And since I know what my hypotenuse is, I know what this leg is, we can do Pythagorean theorem and come up with, over here we get square root of 3 over 2. So, what this gives us then is that the sine of 60 degrees is going to be 1 half comma square root 3 over 2. So, let's go back over here. So, we said that that was 1 half. Square root 3 over 2. So now, can we use the same idea that we had for the 45s? Well, this over here is going to end up being negative 1 half square root 3 over 2. Then we go down here. Okay. Nice thing is, this one here is going to be, whoops, sorry, negative half negative square root 3 over 2. Over here we'll have 1 half and negative square root 3 over 2. Okay. Fairly easy, right? Once we see the patterns that are going here, and we're going around, we're rotating, we can take a look at the reflections across the axes so we can see what's going on. Now, here's the next question. What's 30? If you had to take a stab at it, knowing what 60 degrees is up there, what do you think it might be? Yes, that would be incorrect. Based on what you see there and what has been happening here, we've been talking about reflecting things, rotating things. For what? Okay. Does that make sense? Go back here and we can take a look at what they're talking about here on it. So if we want this, what they're looking at here is this is 30 degrees here. Okay. The distance here had to be this. Now let's see, they don't necessarily show it this way, but what would I happen if I thought about being 60 up here? Okay. If I'm looking at 60 degrees here. Isn't a 30 degree angle just reflected down the diagonal line? If you look at what's going on here, if this up here is 60, this angle measure here is 30 degrees. This angle measure here is 30 degrees. Would the triangle that would be formed from here to here to here have to have the same dimensions as the one that would be from here to here to here. Because here's the 30, there's the 60. You see that. So now, the rest of it falls in place pretty easily, right? This has to be negative square root 3 over 2 and at a half. This down here is negative square root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Over here, we have square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So we've managed to go through and find the rest of the coordinates now. So now when we're dealing with this, if we can go and pick on these, we've got a pretty easy idea of what the answers are going to be.
Now, the unit circle looked rather intimidating yesterday when I handed it out, didn't it? Still looks kind of daunting in some respects, but as you take a look at it and you understand what's going on with it, really the only thing is, is what's happening up here in quadrant one from zero to 90 degrees. If you can understand that and understand that it's rotated or reflected or however you want to look at it, it's really only one set of instructions repeated four times around. So, let's go with this. Now, that brings us to what this is. So, pi over 6. When we look at it, we've got 1 half and we've got square root 3 over 2. Pi over 3, 60 degrees, square root 3 over 2 and 1 half. They're switched around. So, let's try this wonderful working problem. A rain gutter is to be constructed of aluminum sheets 12 inches wide. After marking off a length of 4 inches from each angle, this length is bent up at an angle of 45 degrees. The area of the opening is expressed as a function of theta. So, when they're looking at this, this is what they're doing. They're bending it up at a certain degree measure. Okay. Now, if we think about this, well, those are triangles, correct? The height here is the same as the height over here. So, if I knew what this angle was here, I know that that's four inches, I know what this has to be. How does that help us out? Well, what's this distance over here have to be? Well, it says for theta, being 30 degrees, we put the 30 degrees in there, we do the math, and we end up with it right there because the formula was set up for us. All we had to do was plug in the information. Okay. Now, mind you, because this was listed in degrees, you have to make sure that your calculator is set for what? Degrees. Now, mind you, they went and switched it over to this. But I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk it through with a second plus seven one two. Okay. So mode set it up for degrees. So I've got that set up. Now we are supposed to go and do this. So I'm going to clear out of this. And I am going to do 16 sine 30, close it, times cosine 30, close it, plus 1, close it. And with any luck, I should get something close to 14.9. So it doesn't matter how you do it. There you go. Now I will caution you again. If you are asked for exact values, do not use the calculator. Did you get that? The calculator is going to give you decimals, rounded things. It is not going to give you exact values. For exact values, we need to go back to the unit circle. Be mindful of that. Be very mindful of that. Let's see. I don't think I have anything else that I want to touch upon at that. Again, information that you will want to have. Sine theta is equal to y over r. Now, mind you, when we set this up, that they were our coordinates. Okay. The coordinates identify how far left and right you are from the origin, correct? Up and down from the origin, yes? If our radius is 1, another reason why we call it, like I said, we call it the unit circle for a reason here. 
all of these ratios set up, his sign, back to our Sokotoa, is opposite over hypotenuse. When we are looking at the sign, and we're looking for the opposite side, okay? So I want the sign down here. Opposite side is going to be from here up to this point, okay? That measures opposite side. How far up do I have to go? Y. Okay. So when I'm looking at this, sine of theta, Y over R. Cosine, X over R. X is the side adjacent. Cosine, ha. You know, op or adjacent over hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is 1, it's just going to be the length of the adjacent side. So with that information in there, we can go and find all kinds of wonderful things. So if I want to find the exact values of each of the six trig functions that are set up like this, 4, comma, negative 3, okay? What is the hypotenuse? That's the thing. Well, if I got a coordinate 4, 3, I'm going from 0, comma, 0. That means it's over 4 and 3. And hopefully you guys remember that you got the 3, 4, 5 triangle. If you got a leg that's 3, another leg that's 4, the hypotenuse must be 5. Why? 4 squared is 16. 9 squared is, or 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. Squared of 25 is 5. So I know that it is going to be 5. So if I want the sign of 4, 3, Plug it in. 3 over negative 5. Boom. Done. Cosine 4 over 5. Done. Now, mind you, this coordinate was here at 4, negative 3. So that means it's sitting down here. So you have to keep in mind where things are positive, where things are negative. Granted, that's where the tricky part comes in. But draw it out. Circle. Plot it out, see where you're at. Until you get more comfortable with knowing where things are at, write it out, draw it out. So, it is time for you to get to work. So, there you go.